Obviously, she's playing for first place. Everybody is. But if she yeah. is not going to be part of the ticket with Trump, if he's the nominee, why doesn't she just say that? Well, look, I, I, in terms of the slavery issue, let's, let's talk about that one first. That was cleared up immediately. I mean, obviously, slavery was at the crux of the Civil War. She acknowledged that, you know, uh, immediately. It's an absolute non-issue. So, I mean, if that's the biggest, biggest ding that you can come up with against Nikki Haley, then she's doing, ding. you know, it's just, really, it's really the, well. Governor, I yeah. think it's just the most recent ding and and I thought it would go away you know because it was kind of in that weird week between Christmas and the new year but let's talk about the the vice it presidency has gone away. if yeah. fine if Trump's the nominee would Nikki Haley run with Trump why doesn't she just say no if she wouldn't accept an offer from Trump to be his vice president Look, I, I know that that sounds like news, but I got to tell you, as someone who has been a candidate and been through this and all that sort of thing, uh, when you're a candidate, you're, you're not thinking about any of that. You're really not thinking about any of that. I know that likes to be a news or an, an article, but um, speaking for Nikki, I can tell you, it's it's the furthest thing from her mind. It should be the furthest thing from any of their minds right now because that's all they're focused on. It's not about gee, six months from now, if there's an administration, where's my position? Nobody thinks like that. Everyone is always 100% uh, focused on the messaging, who we talk. To how are we doing the retail politics? You know, our, her numbers are flying through the roof right now, nationally and in New Hampshire. She's well within striking distance. And as I think a lot of folks anticipate, I think even Trump anticipates Nikki Haley is going to win New Hampshire. And then they're all trying to figure out what they're going to, what Trump's team is going to do after that. So I, I just got to tell you, it's it's not even really part of the thought process yeah, when you're a candidate. So it seems to me that if it's not th part of the, the thought process, you could just say, yeah, I'm not going to run with Trump. Look, I might run again in 2028. But I'm not going to be a part of a Trump administration if he's the nominee right now. Trump won in New Hampshire in 2016 in the primary, and he won with 35 percent of the vote with a huge field. And he's leading in most of the he's leading in every poll in New Hampshire right now and Iowa. Yeah. Let's talk more about Chris Christie. Do, do you want him to drop out of the race before Iowa, before New Hampshire, so that that maybe anti-Trump vote can get behind a single candidate, maybe Nikki Haley? Yeah. The only person that doesn't want Chris Christie to drop out of the race is Donald Trump, because when he drops out, all of his votes go to Nikki Haley and Trump loses in New Hampshire. Trump's the only one praying that Chris stays in the race. So if Chris wants to fulfill on that mission of delivering Trump a loss, I think he can be the hero here. He's a good guy. He's very smart. I know at the end of campaigns, you know, the thought process gets a little tough. But at the end of the day, I think he's going to make the right decision. Um, but clearly, I've talked to the donor base. The voters are moving. Folks from his steering committee in New Hampshire are coming on, are coming on board. So everyone's saying, hey, you ran a good race. You spoke that truth on Trump. But now we're, we're, we have to move on because... We always knew, and all these candidates knew, at the end of the day, you had to consolidate. And they all knew it was a, a, a pretty big long shot, especially Chris. He knew it was a long shot. We had those discussions a long time ago. So, look, he's a good guy. He's a smart guy. I think he's going to make the right decision. Yeah, you like Donald Trump, would you say, Governor? Do I like Donald Trump? Yep. Um, we, we haven't, uh, we really haven't been on speaking terms for the probably the past year. I spoke to him maybe a year, year and a half ago, something like that. Um, but, no, I haven't, I haven't talked to him recently. Would you support him if he was the nominee? Well, sure. I'm going to look. I'm going to support the Republican. If he's uh, whoever the Republican nominee is, I'm going to support him for president. My God. I mean, Biden's been an absolute disaster for this country. I am also still a believer that Biden is probably not the the Democrat we're facing, right? So, a new, fresh face on the Democrat side is going to have a lot of opportunity. Uh, I think the Democrats are still smart enough to pull that trigger. But yeah, look, we're all going to support the Republican nominee. It's that important to get this country back on track. Why is Donald Trump so appealing to so many of your constituents in New Hampshire? So, look, Donald Trump, when you, have 12, when you had 12 people in the race and it was Donald Trump, it was like, well, yeah, I guess we'll just go with, you know, what we know, right? He's got the name ID. He's, he's the former president. He tries to kind of act like he wasn't the former president, trying his best to set policy, which a, a lot of, some worked, some didn't. Um, so, obviously, the, the appeal is more, well, it's inevitable, right? I mean, he's going to win, right? As you kind of break through that inevitability, folks go, oh, wait a minute, th there's an option. So, one third of all the Trump voters in all those polls have all said they'd still consider another candidate. So that's why when you get it down to a one-on-one -on -one race between Haley and Trump, which we have done, now that psychology of choice is drastically different. Now that's why he's, he's so vulnerable here in New Hampshire, because we've been able to narrow that down. And when you do it in New Hampshire, you can do it for the rest of the country. So I talked to farmers and fishermen. Nikki has sat okay. with them. They're all typically Trump supporters. And they're all saying, you know what? We can't have someone with all that chaos. I need someone focusing on inflation 120% of the time, not lawsuits. I need someone that's going to actually secure the border this time and work with okay. Congress and figure out how to do it, not be distracted. So a lot of those folks that you're seeing are coming over uh, in the coming weeks.